hair analysis. This is not your first introduction to hair analysis because we started out before we started doing our permanent waves or our chemical relaxers to analyze the hair. Until we learn to analyze the hair successfully, we cannot choose the correct chemicals to get what we want to get out of that hair. So all of our salon services should begin with a thorough analysis of the client's hair type and its present condition in order to determine beforehand what kind of results we can expect. Different types of hair react differently to the same service, so it's, th it's essential that a thorough analysis be performed. Hair analysis is performed by observation using the senses of sight, touch, hearing, and smell. The four most important factors to consider in hair analysis are texture, porosity, elasticity, and density. Other factors that you should also be aware of are the growth pattern as well as dryness and oiliness. Growth pattern is like when we talk about the natural part and why people get a natural part in different places is because this hair starts growing this way and this to this side. And when you see different people have different growth patterns, this usually slopes downward on a lot of people. Mine goes right up. You'll notice in uh, crowns, you'll see people with cowlicks in the crown. And occasionally you'll see somebody that's got a cowlick right here and this hair goes straight up in the air. So that's what they're talking about with growth patterns. Hair texture is the thickness or diameter of the individual hair strand. It's classified as coarse, medium, or fine. It differs from individual to individual. It may also vary from strand to strand on one person. Coarse hair texture has the largest diameter, is stronger than fine hair, for the same reason that a thick rope is stronger than a thin rope. Coarse hair also has a stronger structure, usually requires more processing than medium or fine hair, and may also be more resistant to our chemicals. It's usually more difficult for hair lighteners, hair colors, permanent wave solutions, and chemical relaxers to penetrate coarse hair. Medium hair texture is the most common and is standard to which other hair is compared. It is considered normal. It doesn't pose any type of problems, and that's what we see the most in the beauty salon is medium hair. Fine hair has the smallest diameter. It's more fragile. It's easier to process. It's more susceptible to damage from our chemical services than coarser medium hair. And that's the hair we've got to be gentle with, and that's the hair that we've got to use our milder chemicals on. Hair texture can be determined by feeling a single dry strand between the fingers. Take an individual strand from four different areas of the head, the hairline, the temple, the crown, and the nape. Hold the strand securely with one hand while feeding it through the thumb and forefinger of the other. After a while, you begin to notice that difference. And frankly, even now, after my years of experience, I can tell about more from feeling than I can from looking. You know, because I work with my hands all the time on hair. Hair density measures the number of individual hair strands on one square inch of scalp. Tells us how many hairs there are on a person's head. Can be classified as low, medium, or high. Or we might call it thin, medium, or thick dense. Hair density is different from hair texture in that different individuals with the same hair texture have different densities. And all this is saying is somebody that's got fine hair texture may have very dense hair or have a lot of hairs per square inch. That's usually not the rule, but these rules are not in stone by no means. They vary back and forth. Usually you see somebody with coarse hair, they've got a lot of it. And if you see somebody with fine hair, they don't have as much of it. But that's not, that's just the average. That doesn't mean it doesn't occur. The average hair density is about 2,200 hairs per square inch. Hair with high density has more hairs per square inch. Let's look at our chart and it tells us that sometimes it goes by the color of hair also. Blondes may have 140,000 strands on their head. Those with brown hair have about 110,000. Those with black hair have about 108,000. And those with red hair have 80,000. It just goes to show how much things change because when I studied, redheads had the most hair. 
So I don't really know what's changed there, peoples or books. Hair porosity is the ability of the hair to absorb moisture. The degree of porosity is directly related to the condition of the cuticle layer. Healthy hair with a compact cuticle layer is naturally resistant to penetration. Porous hair has a raised cuticle layer that easily absorbs water. That resistance to penetration is our best friend. Why? That resistance to penetration is our best friend. Why would that be the case? Permanent waving, it wouldn't matter to us too much because we've already done all of our work and we just put the lotion on there. But what would happen if we didn't have some resistance and we were applying a relaxer? It was, I think it would damage it. I think it might take out part of it if there was no resistance there. Hair with low porosity is considered resistant. This is a case, and I think we've done this one time before, but we're going to do it again. This is where low is good, high is bad. You know, usually we want the high grade, not the low grade. We do better if we get the high grade. But in this case, low is good because that means the cuticle scales are low or close to the head. That with high porosity, the cuticle scales are standing open and we don't have any of that resistance. It gives us a working time frame. The texture of the hair is not an indication of porosity. Different degrees of porosity can be found in all hair textures. Although coarse hair normally has a low porosity and is resistant to chemical services, coarse hair can also have high porosity. You can check porosity on dry hair by taking a strand of several hairs from four different areas of the head, and we go back to the hair front hairline, the temple, the crown, and the nape again. Hold the strand securely with one hand while sliding the thumb and forefinger of the other hand from the end of the hair strand now towards the scalp. That way you can feel if it feels rough, you know the cuticle scales are open. Hair elasticity. I get a lot of questions about elasticity because hair stretches, and by now we know the rule of that. Wet hair stretches 50% or one half of its length and returns. Normal, healthy, dry hair will stretch 20% of one-fifth and return. But there's one sure way to find out about elasticity. A lot of people say, I'm still worried about elasticity from stretching it. I'm not sure, you know, if I stretched it too far, I put too much tension and I broke it right off or stretched it too hard, you know, snatched it or whatever. So I'm having problems here judging elasticity. There's one sure way to tell if the elasticity is gone out of a person's hair. When you wet your hair, and I know all of y'all shampoo your hair, you can feel and it feels like individual hair strands. Start getting your sense of touch going, you know, now, noticing these things. It'll kind of feel like hair. If the elasticity is gone, it's going to feel like wet cotton. It wants to mush together when it's wet. And when you feel that, that's a warning sign to you. You better stop with the chemical services. It's felt most often on the ends. Those of us that get perms and color and relaxers and all this stuff on hair and don't have it cut regularly, you're going to feel that right on the ends. So start paying attention to the hair ends of anybody you shampoo and on your own head because that's, that is a sure sign, no elasticity present. Hair elasticity is the ability of the hair to stretch and return to its original length without breaking. Hair elasticity is an indication of the strength of the side bonds that hold the hair's individual fibers in place. Wet hair with normal elasticity stretches 50% of its original length and returns to the same length without breaking. Hair with normal elasticity holds the curl from wet sets and permanent waves without excessive relaxing. Hair with low elasticity is brittle. It breaks easily. Hair with low elasticity may not be able to hold the curl from wet setting, thermal styling, or permanent waving. Hair with low elasticity is the result of weak side bonds that usually result from previous overprocessing. Chemical services performed on hair with low elasticity require a milder solution with a lower pH. Such a solution minimizes damage and helps prevent additional overprocessing. 
growth patterns. It's important when shaping and styling hair to consider the hair's growth patterns. That's why we talk about with styling, if you will go ahead and find their natural part and use that part as part of the style, the hair will stay better for that client. If it parts here and wants to go this way and you get over here and put a part to take it back this way, that hair is eventually going back over here because that's the way the follicles are slanted. Hair follicles do not usually grow perpendicular to the scalp. And that's why we have some problems with those mannequins. We get right here, especially when you're getting cut and you'll notice it. Our hair will lay down smoothly here. That sticks right straight out. It's really aggravating. Most hair follicles on a human head grow at an angle other than 90 degrees. And most hair grows in a direction other than straight out from the head. The growth patterns result in hair streams, whirls, and calyx. A hair stream is hair flowing in the same direction. It is the result of follicles sloping in the same direction. Two streams flowing in opposite directions form a natural part in the hair. A whirl is hair that forms in a circular, circular pattern as in the crown. And you'll notice, um, especially when you start cutting hair, you can see it. It's almost a complete circle, it like a little whirlwind got up there. A whirl normally forms in the crown with all the hair from that point growing down. A cowlick is a tuft of hair that stands straight up. They're usually more noticeable at the front hairline, but they can be located anywhere in the head. Dry hair and scalp. It's caused by inactive or underactive sebaceous glands. It's aggravated by dry winter or a desert climate. The lack of natural oils or sebum leads to a flaky scalp and hair that appears, appears dull, dry, and lifeless. Dry hair and scalp should be treated with products that contain moisturizers and emollients. Frequent shampooing should be avoided along with the use of strong soaps, detergents, or products with a high alcohol content because that aggravates it. Dry hair should not be confused with overly porous hair that we've damaged by thermal styling, environmental forces, or chemical services. Oily hair and scalp. <coughs> Oily hair and scalp is caused by overactive sebaceous glands. It's characterized by a greasy buildup on the scalp and an oily coating on the hair. Oily hair and scalp can be treated with clarifying or normalizing shampoos. A well-balanced diet, exercise, regular shampooing, and good personal hygiene are essential to control oily hair and scalp. As we go into our next unit, we're going to take up shampooing and we're going to find that oily hair and scalp is a lot harder to deal with than dry hair and scalp. We're going to keep that in mind. Hair growth. The two main types of hair found on the body are vellus or lanuga and terminal hair. Vellus or lanuga hair is short, fine, and downy hair. We see it on our arms. That's where we pay it the most attention. It's not pigmented and almost never has a medulla. It's commonly found on infants and can be present on children until puberty. On adults, vellus hair is usually found in places that are normally considered hairless, such as your forehead, your eyelids, and a bald scalp, as well as nearly all other areas of the body except for the palms of the hand and the soles of the feet. Women normally retain 55% more vellus hair than men. Terminal hair is the long, soft hair found on the scalp, legs, arms, and bodies of males and females. Terminal hair is coarser than vellus hair, and with the exception of gray hair, it is pigmented. It usually has a medulla and is easily distinguished from vellus hair by its dark color and coarse texture. Hormonal changes during puberty cause some areas of fine vellus hair to be replaced with thicker terminal hair. All hair follicles are capable of producing either vellus or terminal hair depending on genetics, age, and hormonal changes. Let's take a short break and we'll go over the growth cycles of hair.